Chola, you know, and um, humble small ones like myself. I think the point really is to understand the kind of persona that he has the capacity to attract and also his disposition to interact with younger people. Multidimensionally, of course, uh, from the street trader to the university professor. And he has a knack for promoting talented people into position of relevance. He's very good at putting round pegs in round holes. As a followership of people that, that can lay claim to have been made by him, I, I, I can be said to be one of them in that when I came into politics the first time, they supported me to be governor. He was here in Ondo State, campaigned for me. Yes, maybe along the line by the time it was the second time I was going to run. We, apart, we, we went different ways. But that's, that does not matter. It, it's all part of politics. But this time around, when I ran again, he came back and we are, we are there. So we cannot take away from him the fact that we have more or less like a number of us who can, who can be said to have had from his own, I mean, who are, are tutelage, can be said to be in his own political class. He was like a teacher to so many people, and many people grew up under him. In eight years of inspiring leadership, he had turned Lagos State around and made it the envy of other states and their governors, some of who visited to understand his magic of governance. When you give me a governor, I said, I'm not going to reinvent the way. You can't question the accomplishment. As a city governor, I envied what he accomplished in Lagos. And I could still remember when he was governor of Lagos State, he was on the third mainland bridge, and there was an accident. He bumped into that accident and saw someone who had been badly injured. He stopped his convoy and personally picked on the victim and took that victim to the hospital and stayed with the victim and later asked the commissioner for health to stay there and make sure the people that were badly wounded were properly taken care of. That is a worthy example. One thing we need to learn and we need to emulate from him. First of all, we need to look at his life and his, the characteristics that surround him. One of it is generosity, which Islam has laid emphasis on, which Almighty Allah too has laid emphasis on in the Holy Quran. Secondly, when you look at Bola Ahmed Tunubu, one of the embodiments that you need to see from him that is a go-getter, is a result-oriented person, is a political icon, and is a political strategist too. I actually joined his government in 2002. So I was, you know, I was with, with that cabinet for five years. Um, Ashwaju was, and I'm sure he's still, um, a, a leader that is next to none. He's a kind-hearted man. He's a man um, that he's so very compassionate, very understanding, very accommodating. Um, he, during that time, he was a leader that was truly leading from the front, but he was also a leader that was, that was open to ideas. Um, Ashwaju never, for one, um, drilled down his, his own thoughts on the entire cabinet in one full sweep. He was ready to take others on. He was ready to listen, you know, to other ideas in cabinet. And if you have superior arguments, if you have a belief that is very strong, he listens and he listens very well. In 1999, when he became the governor of Lagos State, I was deputy governor in Kano State. So we had opportunities to meet together, to attend the NEC meeting 
if I had the opportunity to represent my governor at that time, even though he was in a different political party, we were in PDP, but equally the same as governor and deputy governor, we had the opportunity to know ourselves. And from there, I started seeing him as a giant politician. And he has proved me right so far. Today I'm very, very proud to say... Someone that is not very easy to describe. Ashwajo remains an enigma. He is highly intelligent. He's very tenacious, extremely courageous. He's very dependable and very reliable. He's a very consistent person. Okay, can you tell me, is there any other man who can just beat his chest and say, yes, I've done this, I have raised councillor, I have raised supervisory councillor, I have raised chairman, I have raised even uh, senator, house of rep, even governors. Where is that man? Who will not use only his wife and his children? He will be disabled because he has done his best in forming one of the largest political teams in Nigeria. Where people believe this could not be done, he did it. Look at Lagos. What he enunciated, the program he formulated, have been followed by successive. And then Lagos today now is the, one of the best cities in Africa, if not in the world. This is coming from the brain of a single person. And his ability to muster people together, to have a common goal. Tinubu is one of the best governor Lagos State has ever produced. And consequence governor has followed his step. He has also improved on the life of our youth. Tinubu is sincerely assertive. Attend tenure in Lagos State. He did his best. He listens to everybody. But when he's by himself later at night, middle of the night, you know the man that never sleeps. Sometimes we have dinner around 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Not only me, but him alone, but other people like that. That's when he starts thinking what everybody has said since morning. Then he'll come out with the right decision to make. He's been very consistent and has left careful without whoever the same Governors of Lagos were very forthright. These governors of Lagos, of Lagos very spectacular. As far back as at the time when I was there as chairman of the EFCC, uh, we, we, we investigated almost all the governors then. And not just we, because we had very good quality partnership with the uh, UK authorities and also British, I mean America, FBI. And I remember we did a thorough job in looking into Lego State, honestly, genuinely. And I told you we were working with Metropolitan Police closely and they were also looking at some of the governments because we had very close relationship you know with the UK our people go there we do business we do they are interested just like we are also interested in seeing things are done very well and proper in Nigeria and the the, the, the work we did I, I remember I appeared for, uh, before our National Assembly one time and they were asking me about what somebody asked about Lagos State say ah what about Lagos State I said well probably we've done our own but it also has an international angle. What I meant then was that outside Nigeria, the authorities there are also looking because Lagos economy was extremely important to all. Very big economy, probably number five in Africa. Uh, and they were interested. They wanted to see how things are done. So they, they carried their own investigations and it was okay, legitimate, because we relate very well. And I, I told the... Uh, uh, National Assembly, Senate in particular, that uh, in the case of Lagos State, uh, I think 
the international community were also looking and checking. And they did, they did. We personally, we didn't see anything. We didn't. And that's why we ended up not taking any case to court with respect of Lagos State. There is a saying in Yoruba land, Akonda Eda Omo Udua. That's a very short phrase of what I'm going to use to qualify Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Chile. Hate him or like him. The truth be told, he has still been irrelevant and will continue to be very relevant in the face of democratic process, governance, and above all in the history of we the entire Yoruba people. BAT said, education is the greatest weapon against poverty. We cannot innovate without education. We need a leader who is a thinker and a doer. Bolatinumbu did not only think, he did. Be it in infrastructure, in education, in health, in social welfare, in security, and more resounded in revenue generation. If you remember, they laid that foundation given the beginning of that fourth republic. And these were ideas, these were novel ideas that certainly um, couldn't all be broken in eight years. So that foundation was rock solid. That should not be so surprising. He had drank his fill from the well of wisdom and governance of the great Obafemi Awolo.